Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is September the 19th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Let's see, no work today. Like I mentioned towards the end, I was taking a couple days off just to kind of rest and rejuvenate. I actually had some plans, but they got uh, rain checked. And you know what? Honestly, I'm I'm, I'm a-okay with it. Like kind of the energy of my September was kind of faltering a bit. I, I was getting a little bit worried that I'm like, I'm going into this dark fall again. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. And I, I you know, that still feels like that. I still have that looming energy, but I will say this Thursday I've had, it's just been super good. It's been so good. Um, which I'm going to get into a little bit of, um, but actually, first we'll do food corner. Why not? Let's switch up the orders a little bit. Um, I had a sp- I made some spicy chicken noodle soup uh, with a salad. Uh, I, I, to be fucking honest, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just send it, set it straight, shoot straight, whatever. I really didn't want to eat last night. Like I just like after the funnel cake, as good as it was, my stomach felt like kind of funky, and then just. I didn't really want to eat anything heavy. I'm still sick. I'm feeling a little bit better today. But, you know, still sick. I just really wasn't vibing with any of my options available. Didn't really want to eat. But I was like, no, Isaiah, you got to eat. Because man cannot live off of funnel cake alone. And so after my walk and everything, I was like, all right, I'm going to make some chicken noodle soup. So I made a spicy chicken noodle soup, which I got to say, I used to like really be ho-hum about chicken noodle soup. And I think it's a really core reason why I refer to soup as prison food, because it's food I really only eat when I'm sick. And it's like, okay, you got to eat your chicken noodle soup, right? You got to like that stock, what you got to do. But really, like, I love whenever I can kick up a soup. You know, if I'm getting that chicken tortilla, I'm, I'm spicing that up. If I'm if I got the spicy jambalaya, it's already spicy. I'm making it spicier. Um, in this situation with the chicken noodle soup, like they do have that option with Progresso or whatever. I just take matters into my own hands. I have a spice rack. I make it work. And uh, I gotta say, it was good soup. It was good fucking soup. And I, I realize every time I have this spicy chicken noodle soup, I'm like, this is what my heart wanted as a child. If if chicken noodle soup hit like this every fucking time, boy howdy, I would I would feel way better about soup at the age of thirty. But you know, that being said, I, I do truly respect soup. You know, it is an integral thing, especially when you are sick. And uh, I respect the people who incorporate it into their diet daily. You know, uh, you know, much love to the people who shift in the soup mode. Um, and not just for fall, they just do it when they want to, you know what I mean? I fuck with that. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, let's get, let's get into the day. What do we do today? Um, I, um, I went to Einstein Bagel Bros, so actually, like, Food Corner continued. God, I love, I love this place, y'all. I, I've, I've, I've talked about it before. I went there for the first time, I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago, and this time I was like, okay, I'm still on like an exploration mode. Like I want to try more and more and more and more stuff. Um, this time I got the Nova Lox, which was essentially um, a, it was a salmon bagel sandwich with like a plain schmear, red, uh, red onions, capers, tomato, excuse me. And the cream cheese was like a plain and the bagel was plain. When I, I let me tell you, when I bit into this thing, I moaned in the in the fucking parking lot. <laughs> I was just, it was so good. Oh, and there were capers too. It was so good. It was so good. I licked the wrapper, and then let me lick the wrapper. I, mm, I went in. I went in. It was so good. They didn't have my pretzel bagel. That's like something I wish I could get every fucking time because I love pretzel anything. And granted, it's not really a pretzel bagel. It's like uh, just a lot of salt. It's like their salt bagel, essentially. And um, it's just so good. I mean, maybe they do incorporate elements to it, kind of like melon mushroom or what have you. But um, that that's that's a peak bagel for me. They didn't have that. So I was like, okay, let me try the chocolate chip bagel with the honey almond. Uh, also, in the Nova Locks, it had a plain schmear, which is perfect. It was fine. Um, almost as like it was like giving like a mayo vibe. Almost, I, I love that. Um, 
let's see here. What else did I get? Uh, then I also got the French toast bagel with um, strawberry cream cheese. And, of course, I hit just like last time. So, I mean, I- I'm definitely just giving them high praise. I- that might be my restaurant of the year right now. Like, I don't know what's topping it in terms of what I've eaten so far this year. Uh, I was telling my friend, too, that, like, on my tier list, bagels have, like, just shot far and far above uh, ahead of donuts. As much as I love a donut, uh, like, it's just so hard like to get a donut, it's almost like a critical hit to get a good bag of donuts whenever you order them. It doesn't matter where. Like, I, I, maybe I'm crazy for saying this, but like, even my favorite places, whether I'm talking about Holtman's or like, you know, the Jupiter Donuts place I go to sometimes. Um, there's a, another place that's like right up the street from me that I've mentioned and I can't remember the name right now. But, um, you know, also amazing donuts. But I've realized that it's just like these donuts there's a memory attached to a lot of these situations where it's like, oh man, I'm eating these donuts at like crazy hours or like this donut is just so good this one time that I'm like, wow, this is crazy. But like, there's just a strong consistency that comes from a bagel and a schmear that you just can't fucking beat. Like, I don't know. It's just so good. So uh, like I said, I was moaning in the parking lot over this shit. It was so good. Um, I then went and bought a scale which is going to play into a little bit later. I uh, bought a scale, and um, I needed a backup towel since, you know, the whole 5 old situation where I use a towel to throw it away. I threw the, the whole thing out. So I needed a new towel. And um, then I went to go work out, which was nice. It was nice to get a nice little pump, a little, little, little sweat. Whew, I, I sweat so much at that gym. And I'm sweating so much now. I sweat all the time. Like, it's, I really do realize that, like, this has just been a summer of sweat for me. And I'm okay with it. Like, you know what I mean? It just is what it is. Like, I'm a sweaty guy, and, like, I know that that's not appealing. I don't love it, but I've accepted it. It's just my truth. Um, But that being said, that's going to lead me into something that is just, um, it's very heartfelt. Um, I hope I don't get emotional. Hopefully, I I got that out of my system, and I'm going to be able to deliver this clean. Um, But um, took my my, my little scale home, and I said, all right, I'm finally going to weigh myself fucking, you know, fuck butt naked and shit. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna fucking say it, okay? Like, I, I've made this joke before, but it's like, yeah, I weigh what I weigh on the fucking cargo scale at work, and, like, but that's me with my gear on, my whole shit, okay? My whole kit. I got my fanny on. I got all my shit in that. You know what I mean? I got shoes on. I got whole, all my clothes. So I was like, let me finally weigh myself, because I, like, you know, I'm not, I'm off, I'm off for the whole weekend, and I've just gotten really obsessive about this shit. I can't help it. And I was like, let me get a scale finally. So I got the scale, and I'm finally on it, and this motherfucker reads 242 pounds. Now, if you're a longtime listener, you're as happy as I've been, because that is beyond the goal that I, I, I set for myself at the top of this fucking season, you know? At the top of summer, this has been an ideal thing that I've, I've been wanting to hit, is just 245 pounds. I mean, shit, like, this summer, I was at 260, but when I really started, like, saying, hey, I'm gonna really fight this shit, damn, I was at, like, 280, that was, I'm, I'm incorporating, like, maybe about five years of progress, maybe, maybe three to five years, like, I can't, quite can't remember, y'all know I'm shitty with time, but I, I was just, I couldn't believe it, I couldn't believe it, like, but it really is a culmination of all of the shit I've been setting out to do since last year. Since last fucking year, y'all. Like, where I was like, yo, I gotta I gotta start walking. I gotta start doing this. And even before that, with the home workouts. Like, it is this discipline that I've been trying to instill in myself that I never really had. And um, I'm just really proud of myself for um, making this shit happen. It feels really good. And... Um, I, you know, I plan on keeping at it. You know what I mean? I want to go harder. I want to go further. I want to make more goals and accomplish that. But I want to thank everyone who's said a kind word to me, who has supported me, um, seen me at it, walking down the streets like a crazy person at any given hour. And then just like, I saw you walking around, man. Hell yeah, dude. Like, it really means a fucking lot. And I'm just really stoked. Like, I'm really happy. Like, y'all, I can ride a horse. (laughs) I've always wanted to ride a horse, and I found out that, like, the weight limit 
It's like around 2.45. And I, I get that. I respect that. I remember being like drunk talking to my friend who was a horse girl. I was like, look, dude, I think I'm too fat to even ride a horse. And now I can. So <laughs> I just, I'm just in a really good mood today. It's just been a really good vibe. You know, this was kind of my, a bit of my birthday gift to myself to kind of take these two days off and it really hit at a really good time. And uh, I'm just really happy to talk about this shit. I'm really happy to just do this right now even. Just do my yapping session with y'all. I, it really means a lot. Ugh, excuse me, sorry. I'm sweating and crying now. I I wasn't going to cry and I'm crying. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, it's just been a good day so far. The vibes, dare I say, immaculate. Um, but yeah, enough, enough yapping about my shit, about my life, my beautiful, precious little life. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do a startup and uh, get into some news. Ooh. Excuse me. <coughs> All right. Our first story comes from WLKY. KSP. Body found near Kentucky 175 shooting scene believed to be Joseph Couch. This is an update on a shooting that took place on I-75 in Kentucky. Um, Kentucky State Police say a body has been found in the area... Um, near where several people were shot uh, off Interstate 75 almost two weeks ago. And they believe it is Joseph Couch, the suspected shooter. Um, yeah. Oh, excuse me. KSP London Post was notified around 3.30 p.m. Wednesday that two uh, troopers and two civilians found a body off exit 49 off 70, uh, I-75 in Laurel County. WLKY news chopper flew over the area with police in an area less than a mile away from the shooting scene. Excuse me. Now, it's important to add here, at least I feel like it's important. They say that, like, two troopers found it and, like, two civilians. But I also have heard that, like, the two civilians found it and they live streamed it. And I was like, oh, that's kind of a little morbid. But I, I understood why they did because there was a reward out for a, a good amount of money. And I want to get to that a little bit later, but I think that's why they did that in terms of saying, like, hey, we got to live stream this. Like, I think we found the guy. Uh, also, that's something that's not mentioned in this article, and I wish I had kind of double-checked this, but I had heard from Couch that he either was talking to an ex uh, of some sort, or my, it might have been a sibling, um, you know, someone in, in cor- correlation with him, some kind of person. And essentially, he had was saying, he was, like, saying, like, look— I'm going to go and I'm going to do this shooting and then I'm going to walk into the woods and I'm just going to fucking kill myself. Um, paraphrasing this, obviously. But essentially, it's like, oh, okay. So he definitely, you saw that he did the first part, which was essentially like go up in his RAV4. I think it was a RAV4. And then was just taking shots at people, you know, off of the um, interstate. And, um, you know, after that, which I'm glad, I don't think anyone was killed there, but I mean, still very scary, very harrowing situation. Um, but then he just, you know, ran off into the woods and then killed himself. Um, now there's not full confirmation as of yet. Uh, the coroner has not positively identified the body as couch, but police say there, um, articles associated with the body that would lead them to believe it is him. Police did not say what the articles were that would make them believe that the body is Couch. So right now we're going under the assertion that this is Couch and that they have found him. Uh, let me go ahead and skim down to the, the, the thing here. Uh, KSP said the McCoys will be receiving the $25,000 reward offered by the department and private donors for information leading to Couch. Before the discovery, the reward was at $35,000. So I say, stop, wait. That's kind of fucked up, right? And leading back to like why they had the live stream, yada, yada, yada. 
I think it's a bit fucked up that they're not getting the full fucking bore of the money, right? Like, look, we live in a capitalist fucking society, which I'm going to be talking about a little bit of a half of a theme here. Like, well, maybe a full theme a bit. But it's essentially, like, you should be getting all that you said, hey. Like, like that's what you said, 35000 Like, give these motherfuckers their due. And, and this is another thing, another thing I wanted to mention, because I've been kind of, like, reading a little bit of side articles here, kind of waiting for this moment. Like, literally hearing, like, law enforcement talking about, like, we're staying up to, like, three or so in the morning doing these long searches for, for couch, and then they finally find them only with the help of actually civilians, which is why you put this fucking reward up, you know? So, like, what's the stipulation here that makes them lose $10,000, I guess, is what I'm getting at. I think that's kind of a bit, a bit fucked up, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. I am glad that this isn't, uh, yeah, what's a Toyota RAV4? There you go. Uh, they also, the, it was an AR-15, exactly. Uh, also, this is a random aside, but I wanted to do a bit of a correction. It, it brain blasted into my head. But um, I know I read that it was an AK-style rifle in terms of the uh, Ryan Wesley Ruth second assassination attempt on Trump. I found out today, listening to another podcast, uh, True and On, you know, gotta love it. Um, it was an SKS. So it's a completely different, uh, you know, weapon system altogether. Uh, I believe it was an SKS with the lens, all the same, but whatever. Uh, neither here nor there. Let's get back to couch. Um, that's really all I have here. But, th like, there was law enforcement saying that this whole search, they were up at all hours of night, they couldn't fucking find them. This full, this, which is a weird thing that they said. I get what they were trying to do here, the vibe. Like, there's like, this force is like a jungle. Like, trying to uh, establish that. Like, this is very vast. It's not easy for them to cover this. But I'm like, a big force is a big force, brother. Like, like come on. Like, are, are you assuming the audience is like like a rug rat? Like, we get what the fuck a big force is and, and like, how vast and expansive this, this situation is and why it's so hard for you. Just, just find them so that shit doesn't get worse. So, I mean, I'm glad that it didn't. I'm glad that he didn't go on to keep on killing or, or, or shoot. I say keep on, but like keep on shooting, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, because no one died in the shooting. I feel like I got to reiterate that. Maybe I didn't say that well enough. But still, I mean, it's very, very startling to be shot at while you're driving a fucking semi truck and you got pulled over or what have you. Like This is like multiple people, multiple instances. So, you know, glad that we can kind of close a chapter here. Hopefully, at least it looks that way. I'll definitely come back if there's any, you know, updates or anything like that. I'll let me go ahead and blow my nose real quick and we'll segue. Oh, man. Ooh. Yeah. Oof. So this is where if I had an editor, you wouldn't hear this. It wouldn't happen. But then I, I often wonder, would you, would you lose a little bit of the charm, you know? <laughs> oh, mm. okay. That didn't feel good. I mashed my nose ring into the fucking like bridge of my nose or whatever i didn't mm. all right awesome love that for me okay from the bbc Ooh, we're talking about mr beast mr beast and amazon named in lawsuit over beast games the man had a whole game show for himself um youtuber mr beast has been named in court documents which allege uh contestants were shamelessly exploited in his upcoming series beast games People who took upon or people who took part have sued the production companies involved in the show, which include Mr. Uh, I, don't, I wonder if this is even a typo or not, but but, but include Mr. B twenty twenty four and Amazon. Maybe that's the name of the show. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Whatever. The shuri the the series the series first announced in March offered a thousand participants the chance to win a cash prize of five million dollars or 3.5 million pounds this is bbc that i gotta let you know um promised to be the biggest live show live game show in the world but in a case filed at a los angeles court on monday participants alleged they weren't paid subjected to unsafe conditions and experienced sexual harassment which i mean damn kind of a grim coincidence what we've been kind of gleaning from like the dog pack videos and, and shit of that nature that Damn, this has kind of become a trend. Uh, let's see. Documents say Mr. B 2024 is believed to be owned in whole or part directly or indirectly by Mr. Beast, real name Jimmy Donaldson, who is the biggest YouTuber in the world with more than 300 million subscribers. Um, BBC Newsbeat has contacted Mr. Beast and Amazon for comment. <clears throat> excuse, oh, excuse me. 
in the legal papers, parts of which have been redacted. Five anonymous contestants have brought claims on behalf of everyone who took part. They claim the production team kept themselves under, kept them under surveillance, controlled when they slept, uh, what they wore, and denied them privacy and access to the outside world. They were underfed and overtired, it claims, with meals provided sporadically and sparsely, which endangered the health and welfare of contestants. Once again, lining up with a typical fucking, you know, day in the life uh, at, at at a Mr. Beast set. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. The set was uh, also said to have fostered a culture of misogyny and sexism, creating a hostile environment for women, which included sexual harassment. This was not uh, only noticed but allowed, the document says. And apparently, this was allowed because of marching orders from the top. The contestants' lawyers say they could be compensated for their time. With, or said so they should be compensated for their time, which they say was essential labor for the production, arguing they were not working for free and should have been classed as employees. Uh, all the claimants are seeking thousands of dollars for everyone who took part uh, to cover unpaid wages. Two of the listed complaint, uh, claimants who are women are also seeking further compensation for the allegations of a hostile workplace. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a major development in the beast world. Um, and like I said, it really kind of lines up with information that we've been kind of hearing over the years. And I think that it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, this is maybe the best time to strike when the iron is hot. You see Mr. Beast, even though he has these white shoe lawyers or whatever the fuck, like, no, this is very fucked up. And like, if, if anything, you guys are the most recent people to experience that abuse. So maybe you should fucking make it happen. You know, (coughs) so I'll keep you posted on that lawsuit, but I wanted to hit on a little bit of a side, we'll call it side action, um, with Mr. Beast launching more or less a new Lunchable, like, run, it's called Lunchly, he's not launching it alone, this was like a collaborative trio effort between KSI, Logan Paul, um, and Mr. Beast, at least in terms of, like, people who are at the face of these things, I, I, you know, I never know who's behind all of it, you know, or what have you, but these are the people you see and who are pushing this new product, um, <coughs> but it's caught a lot of fucking flack, and people are really mad, and they're big mad, they're molding it online and in chats and in forums about, you know, oh, I can't believe Mr. Beast would do this, what about the kids, and, um, you know, we'll get to this, and, and I, I want to say this is, like, this is not me making any kind of pitch in defense of Mr. Beast, KSI, or Logan Paul. Fuck them all on that shit. You know, they've all sold poison to children one way or another with the food and the drinks that they sell. I'm at least referencing Prime, and, I, I, you know, I'm sorry, I don't trust anything that Mr. Beast sells. <laughs> I'm not buying. No, thank you. I did look at a Feastables the other day because I'm a chocolate guy. I love candy. I'm a I'm a candy monger. Um, but that being said, there's just something about Feastables that I feel like it, it's trying to like have this image of like this is as good as like almost international chocolate, but it's really like Hershey's chocolate, especially after it's like year run. Like initially they were like, oh, it's five ingredients, but now you see that they've like found a way to say, oh. It's almost like the last ingredient. It's like Chemical X <laughs> type shit, like with like the sugar or something like that. But um, I-, I haven't tried it. I'm okay on it. The overall reviews, I'll, I'll stand on those. They're like, that's oh, fine. It's chocolate. It's not the best chocolate you'll ever have. You know, it's edible. It's not worth the price that you have to pay for it. Um, I'm definitely not going to clean the aisles for them. That's for fucking sure. Crazy fucking thing if you know, you know there. But yeah, so let's get to these Lunchables. They're called Lunchly. Um... Let's see, this is, you know, supposed to be aimed for the kids, and I guess that that's the biggest fucking beef for a lot of these people who have chirped and chimed about it. It's like, you're selling this shit to kids, it's so bad. But, like, here's my thing, I, I want to read a little bit here. Uh, this includes one of three processed uh, food options. The pizza, turkey stackums, or fiesta nachos. What do those sound like? Bar for bar, those are Lunchables. And it's like, well, Lunchables are bad. You shouldn't be eating Lunchables. But like in food desert situations, when you have a fucking picky kid who you're not going to be able to like give him fucking almonds or, you know, nice granola or or some fucking organic go-gurt, whatever the fuck. Or or maybe there's, there's reasons why you can't. Maybe they're fucking picky. Who knows? 
you're going to settle for a goddamn Lunchable. Maybe I'm biased here because that's what I cut my teeth on as a fucking kid. And I'm going to be like, well, I turned out just fine. But like, I don't think you're going to be able to sell a kid on a goddamn apple and like some fucking water. But that being said, like, I feel like the Lunchleys and the and the Lunchables are pretty fucking comparable. There are in some ways on like parts of the nutrition where like actually the Lunchleys are coming under and like there's a better calorie intake. There's like less fat or whatever the fuck. Um, that being said, I think the biggest bust for these Lunchleys is the, the Logan Paul KSI part, which is where they fucking butt fuck a prime in here because you're, there's no way you're going to tell me a prime drink that has like 400 milligrams of, of caffeine is better for a kid as opposed to a Capri Sun that just is like juicy juice that has, I think, around 55 grams of caffeine. That, that's not comparable. But they, they, I think they know that. I think the creators of this shit know that. So that's why it's packaged and sold as something that like in every other way, you're, you're, it's better for your kid. And like if you look at Prime as an energy drink, it's not the quote-unquote worst energy drink. I refuse to drink that shit. I think that that's one of those energy drinks that's like, I love sugar. I'm a sugar-coated motherfucker. But, like, that's too much for me. It's doing way too much, probably. And, like, I don't want a blow-pop energy drink. That doesn't sound good at all. So, skip them. That being said, like I said, there's just been a big uproar from you know, content creators, and they've been blabbing and whining, and it's like, I can't believe that Mr. Beast would sell this poison, like, this doesn't been, it doesn't, been, it doesn't benefit anyone, and it's just like, dude, I get it, but this sounds like you guys are hitting the players and, and really not attacking the game, you know what I mean? Like, the system is designed this way. There are not many options for people. You can go ahead and tell me that there are, but I'm talking about affordable, really fucking cheap options, and, like, if a kid wants a fucking lunch lay, I don't think that's the craziest fucking thing. I'm sorry. And I don't think Mr. Beast or Logan Paul or KSI are the real demons at play here. I really wish people would attack other options where I make it less viable for people to want to do this kind of shit to make some money. Because at the end of the day, yes, that's why he's doing it. He's not actually trying to provide healthier options. He tries to say that in his defense, you know, to these fucking naysayers. And it's like, I get it. You got to say what you, 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 you can here. But it's like, no, man, you're just trying to make a buck. But I'm saying I fucking get it worms are gonna try to rise i i understand you're just the guy at the top of the fucking dirt cool for you you're doing your thing but i don't know obviously this shit's fucked up i'm i'm a lunchables guy i'm gonna stay a lunchables guy that if i'm ever gonna i will say though i i am tempted by the have you ever seen the like hillshire farm or insert brand here but like the grown the grown lunchables they try to market it market it as charcuterie or whatever i heard anthony bourdain call it charcute Started a new book, by the way, Medium Raw. Already good. Love it. Never going to eat a order line. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't subscribe to that. Like, ooh, love a salami. Love a cracker. But like, I can just get those ingredients and like make my own lunch lunchable. Then. <laughs> this is a lunchable shit, if you ask me. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. All right, that, let's go on to Boeing, the Boeing strike. Um, sadly, not too much to report. And what I'm going to report is unsettling. But um, from CBS News... Boeing strike emotes, uh, Boeing strike emotions flare as security guard flashes gun in picket line altercation. So what, what the fuck is that about? Um, an ongoing strike by 33,000 Boeing mechanic, uh, mechanics, I think I'm saying it right there, uh, took a potentially dangerous turn as a security guard displayed a gun following an altercation with workers walking a picket line on Monday outside the airplane manufacturer's main hub in Seattle. Sheriff's deputies responded to reports of a disturbance at a Boeing's parts uh, distribution center at Seattle Tacoma International Airport early morning, uh, early Monday morning. A spokesperson for the King County Sheriff's Office told CBS Money Watch, noting reports of protesters blocking access to the property. A security guard flashed a gun as he was leaving the premises, although there was no indication he pointed it at anyone. And he uh, left without further incident, according to the sheriff's department. But I'm sorry, that's beyond the pale there. <coughs> um, I'm at least glad that Boeing says that this is unacceptable. But it's like, motherfucker, you at least have to say that. That is a bare minimum because this security guard is attached to your company. And they are intimidating union workers. 
For fucking what? Like, oh, they're blocking the way. That is what you do. That is that is what you do as a union. I'm sorry. That is this is a strike. That's just how this shit's gonna fucking go. You can cry about it all you want, but like, I don't know. Why don't you fix some shit instead of losing some fucking fucking money, dude? Um. So yeah, I found this very disturbing. I don't really. There's not really much else to add from it, you know. But you definitely should feel safe while you are, you know, picketing. It's crazy that you have situations where people are getting run down or even like you know, potentially run down in these situations, not in this specific situation, but it's something I've heard about in covering strikes. Um, but yeah, a, a fucking security guard on his Punisher arc being like, I got that thing on me if you get crazy, bitch. Like, the indication, insinuation, bullshit. Like, no, dude, fuck off with that. That that should be fucking illegal. That, that security guard should be fired. There should be something gone there, something happened there, but it probably won't be. They probably got to see that motherfucker again. Um, but yeah, we're still rooting for the, uh, the Boeing mechanist on strike. I think I, I read a, uh, I read a random comment. I don't usually talk on this kind of stuff, but I usually don't get that many comments, but they were like, oh, until the Boeing planes are, are, are flying and there's no issues, then they shouldn't be getting paid. I gotta say, address that. That's, that's crazy talk. That's fucking malarkey. These motherfuckers are doing the best they can with the tools at hand that's just a point blank period thing kind of like when in the other episode where i'm talking about the dolly the crew workers i'm not mad at them they shouldn't be punished for showing up and doing the fucking job okay these planes are falling out of the sky because the powers that be are like no we are cutting corners okay like that's the problem they should be getting their due they are doing the best they can so i am very anti that i'm not gonna like keyboard warrior anybody that's just not my vibe I'm, I'm a positive dude what do i tell y'all at the end leave positive comments if you want to be weird and funky by all means i'm probably not going to delete your shit i'm not going to banish it to the shadow realm but you know I, sometimes if it provokes me enough i might address it on the pod this is a one-way street you gotta deal with that sorry sorry but um yeah i just wanted to squeak to that uh we have one more thing that i wanted to cover it's nice and light i love that for me i love that for us but it is a, it's a, it's an end of an era, maybe, you know? Uh, we're going to talk about bankruptcy, uh, the end of uh, the old uh, Tupperware. But um, maybe I've said too much. Let me go and take my last break, and we'll close it out. From CNN, the party is over as Tupperware files for bankruptcy after years of troubles. <coughs> mm. oh, excuse me. Tupperware, known the world over for its plastic food storage containers, has filed for bankruptcy after years of failing popularity and uh, a fall. I'm sorry. After years of falling popularity and financial troubles. Let me know if you even know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. Uh, I, I'm very curious of my audience. I feel like a lot of people who listen are around my age. So you had a parent who gave a fuck about Tupperware, who gave a damn about Pyrex. Like, these were things that matter to you. Cookware was a fucking thing. Like, not just, like, a thing you use, but oh, damn near some, like, a status symbol that, like, you had, like, cool Tupperware or cool, like, cookware in general. Now I feel like there's just so many brands... Uh, whether it's more expensive or less expensive, especially with Tupperware, there's just so many like plastic options that you can fucking use. Like I have Glad containers that same as Tupperware pretty much, you know what I mean? Or like even to go, like it's just become a, a buzzword more than anything. But apparently like Tupperware as a brand has been struggling, um, but they filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy, which once again, I, I always have to mention that like, maybe this is the end for a company like Tupperware, maybe they're donezo, but maybe this is just them trying to shed debt, reconsolidate and like rebrand maybe with like, you know, new guidance, new shareholders taking over, whatever the fuck. And they're going to send the company to a new direction because essentially they've just been very stagnant or falling, failing. Um, and they're really trying to pivot now. Um, so, I, I mean, like I said, maybe this is his death of Tupperware. You know, maybe it, it's as dead as Pig Latin as it is as of now. But um, 
Let's see, let me, let me read a little bit here. Tupperware has historically sold to consumers only through so-called direct sales, most commonly at Tupperware parties. Like, do you even know what a Tupperware party is? Like, that's that's like a fucking cryptid thing to me. That might as well be a keyboard party. <laughs> Fuck, I've, I've obviously never seen or witnessed one. It just sounds like something of yore or something that swingers do. Um, but similar to, cos, uh, to cosmetic company Avon, maybe you've heard of Avon, uh any any avon sellers any former avon sellers i should say maybe um the uh avon business model and only began selling in target in 2022 see i didn't know that they 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 were just now new in the game and then they're like oh shit we're drowning uh the 78 year old brand empowered women to enter the sales business but like in like a ponzi scheme style way (laughs) um but yeah, essentially, uh, Tupperware rang the alarm bells in April of 2023, so not long after actually saying, okay, we're cutting the bullshit, let's actually try to, like, be on the, like, regular. But it's like, once again, I've already kind of said it, like, everyone's already duplicated what you've done a thousand times over. It's now so cheap to do it, and no one gives a damn about shitty plastic. Like, granted, let me not, let me not besmirch Tupperware. Tupperware was, like, very strong, very flexible, very good. It's supposed to be, like, top-of-the-line shit. But no one needs top-of-the-line shit, especially in a world where you can just go more or less disposable. Now, Tupperware's argument is like, well, this is better plastics for the environment. You know what I mean? Like, you're not throwing this away as often. It's more of a, even like a centerpiece in your home sometimes. So, like, it's something you can use. But I, like, I almost feel like that's a laughable thing to say in, in this day and age because, like, I know friends that, like, are going to go vintage shopping, and they're not looking for fucking Tupperware, dog. They're looking for fucking Pyrex. <laughs> That's what they fucking want. That's what they fucking need. But, um, you know, I'm kind of just mushy-moshing this, you know. We'll, we'll see what happens to Tupperware in the future, if they make it out alive or not. Um, but, yeah, that's the episode. Uh, yeah, once again, a long one. I don't really mind. I, I like being able to uh, really, really blog it out. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just got to do that. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, Patreon.com slash Isaiah News. If you'd like to become a Patreon uh, subscriber, newsy, I should say. Uh, shout out to you at the top of the month. Plug your project if you'd like. Uh, let's see here. Free ways to hit me up. Isaiah News 1 at gmail.com. Feel free to follow me or the podcast and any of the socials. Uh, please subscribe to the YouTube. Love to see that. Love to see comments. Preferably nice comments. Keep it clean. You know, be cool. Uh, if if I like your comment, if it's cool, I'll give it a little heart. Maybe I even shout it out or whatever. But, you know, try not to get too crazy with the glaze. But I do love you. I love you all. You know, and I'm even happy to see the people who are like, yeah, I'm just going to bink shot, say some crazy shit. Awesome. I Shit, I think about the guy who called me dumpster garbage. He said my content was dumpster garbage, and he lives rent free in my head. I mean, his name was blah 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 numbers, so probably not a real person, not brave enough to actually use her name. But like, hey, that's okay. You got me there. True. Before I fucking sent that shit away, I was like, damn, you right. But like, you can leave a cool comment. I prefer a nice one. You know, like I said, we vibe with those. Um, sharing is caring. You know, it can be fun. Try it out. Uh, you can rate the podcast on um spotify what have you um leave a comment as well there we'd love to see that i've never seen a a spotify comment on one of my podcasts but i'm hoping to maybe one day uh but yeah that's it uh thanks so much for tuning in thanks so much for being a friend and hopefully i see you soon for some more good news i love you bye-bye